And before I give uh, the word to the floor, I want your agreement to maybe give the word to the world and ask Emma to come and ask us the first question. Have there, are there any other questions? Three messages. Well, can you read them maybe? Um, now, we have three messages, one from Italy, one from Portugal, and one from France. But um, everybody says that the connection is very good, as Zelika pointed out. The, I think we made a few mistakes. And to be honest, we must stress on the success, but also on the mistakes to improve next year, of course. So the first mistake is that we should have mentioned the address for the questions in the website because we mentioned it only at the beginning of the session. But the idea is that you can connect yourself at any time. And if you miss the beginning, you don't know where to send your questions. So it, it seems stupid, but it's important. So, Annie, next year, we need to look after that. This is the uh, one first point. The second point, um, and uh, we have a, a question. Uh, considering the relevance of the data collected through the survey as presented by Emma Nardi, we would like to know whether the study will be replicated in years to come at decided intervals and consequently make it possible to collect longitudinal data. This is the question, and it's for the past session. So this is something we could uh, take into consideration, and perhaps it's a good idea to have it repeated through time. So thank you for uh, this suggestion. Um, the second message, which is from Portugal, also <clears throat> um, highlights, I think, a mistake because um, Maria Rosario uh, Azevedo, who is uh, Portugal national correspondent, writes, Dear Emma, the Portuguese SECA members had a meeting last week and we talked about the live streaming session. It is impossible to participate because no one has the technical conditions to do it. But if she writes me an email, it means that the technical possibilities are there. So the mistake was uh, that we were not clear enough to say that the simple internet connection is enough. So second point, I need to record for next year. Um, and then, wow, we have, we have, uh, oh dear, let me see. Yes, another one. Um, we have a message from ICOM headquarters. <laughs> and uh, would you like me to read everything? Yes. Bonjour, Emma. It's in French. Je suis actuellement en train de suivre la conférence. Un grand bravo à tout le monde. It's Nadine Amorin who is responsible for uh, the internet and um, the website. Um, en lien avec la conférence, voici un petit message que je vous demande de diffuser au nom de l'ICOM. So, brackets. Cette expérience en live streaming est une formidable opportunité de partage et d'accès au savoir. Nous avons souhaité financer ce projet car, elle, car il est synonyme d'inclusion, valeur fondamentale de notre communauté internationale des musées. Il s'agit d'un bel exemple qui, nous l'espérons, sera largement suivi. Signé ICOM. So, I think that's a, uh, <laughs> Merci Nadine. <laughs> And it also gives me the opportunity to stress that the project was not financed by SECA, but by ICOM. Thank you. This is, yes, of course. I know, I know that we have problems with time all over the world, but I think you have to choose the presentations 
people who present that can be listened, you know, in contact in their own country. For instance, Brazil, a lot of people would love to, to follow the presentation, but it's five o'clock in the morning, is impossible. So, I mean, you should have put someone, or, or I mean, you just consider that people who present, a con would, so that would be interesting for the live streaming, that people that follow will be able in that country. Okay. We took into consideration the problem of the, uh, of the time, of course, and we couldn't find a solution uh, which could uh, be uh, good for every continent. However, all what we are recording will be put on the website. So it's not possible to, l to have live streaming, but it's possible anyway to, uh, to watch the presentation. I mean, all the different timetables. But what I am suggest to have people's communication in the time that the countries could listen to. For instance, I took the place of some Europeans that could have been listened. Because in Brazil, I was there during the live streaming, but was not connected because it was five, five o'clock in the morning. Perhaps a French person or a Norwegian person could be here in my place, what I'm saying, you know. It's well, not that I am I'm asking you know, we, my we time. decide to have one whole day. One whole day. So we have a range of time. It is not possible to have more because of budget reasons. But in in the future we can try to do better. And so Sonia's suggestion is also welcome. Thank you very much. So, just had one good suggestion from the floor. Can I ask the technique to maybe put Emma Nardi's uh, email address again for those who are just joining us now uh, around the world and who would like to have a question? Is that possible? So, the first slide we had this morning, live streaming and Emma Nardi's address. I don't know which one it was. The first one this morning. Which, which one? Yeah, that one. That I one. Think. No, under. No. No. Live streaming there was. Yes, live streaming there was. Let me check. No. Ah, okay. Yeah, wait. Uh, include slide. Where do I have that one? Insert. So, no, that is not the right one. Oh, well, never mind. Oui, mais j'essaie de trouver une page blanche. Attends. Vas-y, voilà. Oui, mais ça va pas. J'arrive pas. May I have the microphone? So, um, dear Professor Nardi, dear organizers of the ICOMSEC annual conference, dear participants, we would like to congratulate you with the organization of the conference and the wonderful opportunity provided by the live streaming. Me and a lot of my colleagues in the Gallo Roman Museum the European Museum of the Year 2011 are working very hard on the upcoming temporary exhibition Sagalassos, City of Dreams, but in this way we, we have at least the opportunity to follow some parts of the conference. So keep up the good work. Looking forward to future conferences and events, kind regards, oh dear. I lost the message. Uh, Bart de, uh, de Marsan, exhibition coordinator, Gallo Roman uh, Museum. So, thank you so much, Bart. No? So, why? Well, it's exciting. No, it doesn't work like that. 
So you see, we have to improve. <laughs> but this is also nice because we have something to do in the future. Okay, so maybe some new questions will arrive. So for those who are join us, joining us live, uh, you will see appearing on the board the address where you can send your questions. Now I would like to ask the floor, uh, present in Zagreb, if, uh, who has a question, and to just queue like this morning so that you come and give your name and ask your question. Who, want, who has a question? Don't tell me those challenging history. Uh, so you want to come here? Just say who you are. Hi, um, I'm Kate. I'm from London, from the Royal Academy of Arts. I was just really wanting to um, go back to the um, theme of entrance or entry narratives. And referring to the Orleans House Gallery project, Orleans House, you mentioned it was um, in leafy Richmond upon Thames. Um, and I was wondering um, what effect the entrance entry narratives had upon the project as a whole. Did you assess them um, at the beginning of the project? Did it change the project and did it have a very different outcome to the one that you were expecting? Um, that's a good question, Kate. Um, we did, um, I probably should have said this at the outset, our, our project was supported by the Heritage Lottery Fund, um, and we did try and sort of gauge entry narratives from the point of view of having some focus groups as part of the exhibition development, though those were very much sort of self-selecting, so we sort of put out in the local press that we were looking for people who were interested in working on that with us, and we also sort of consulted with teachers and talked to them as part of that process. Um, in terms of the entry narratives, I think the other thing that affected what we did was the awareness that throughout that year, people's entry narratives would be changing because in a way there was such saturation of information about the slave trade and abolition that year that by the time we opened our exhibition in the summer, there'd already been a lot out there. And that made us all the more aware that we really needed to tell a very locally specific story that would resonate with our visitors. And that's very much what we tried to do. Um, so I suppose that's the other aspect that informed what we did around the entry narratives. Interestingly, um, late, not actually in relation to that exhibition, but one of the things we tried to do was not make it kind of a flash in the pan that we did this for those four months and then we didn't talk about that aspect of Richmond's history ever again. So we kept a school session in our offer that related to that heritage, though it was obviously much harder to do without the exhibition on the wall. And one of the pieces of feedback we had from school teachers later on was actually that they would have liked it to be more specific because for the school pupils, their entry narrative is actually relatively high by the time they get to the museum because they've tackled the topic of the slave trade in general and that way what they wanted was the more locally specific material. I hope that vaguely answers your question. Okay, any other question? Marie Clarté? There. Just, just to say that um, I, 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 found, excuse me, I found your, your presentation extremely interesting indeed. Um, I think that uh, I didn't think this theme was so very controversial. We know uh, that uh, it is because of the anniversaries around slavery that you worked on that and it's totally normal. I just wanted to address the, the, uh, us as museum educators around the, the politically correct type of subject. And I think that this is really uh, evidently a very politically correct, and your own students were kind of trapped inside that, and would have pushed them a little further around about um, present slavery. What are, you know, because it's so very easy to say it's bad now, you know, and the present slavery is something you should, and I, I would love museums to address things like religion, 
because you ask people, are you religious? But it's a real, this is really a, politic, a controversial issue about economy, about politics. We were talking about that. So I suppose that once we really get to very controversial issues, then probably we, we are in a different educational scope. And I suppose we have to work on that also. But thank you very much for your presentations because they were quite nice. So, Zelika? I just want to say that uh, all presentations were very interesting and I think it is extremely important uh, also because of the political value and the political um, influence museums uh, can make. I think that making young people think about slavery will also contribute them to develop critical thinking towards contemporary slavery, which many people are not aware of. A trafficking uh, in human beings, uh, children, women, these are all very important issues and I think that uh, this is really very valuable and thank you for your presentation. Helene? If you can say your name. I'm Mileni Mila from Brazil. Uh, speak in Spanish. Uh, me gustaría poner en relación a la sesión anterior a e esa, hablando uh, de, de los instrumentos que, que Marie Clarté uh, nos propone, uh, Colette también para que nos podamos comprender mejor como educadores y como identidad de educadores. Eh, justo en la presentación de Sonia, me puso muy claro que nosotros tenemos uh, una identidad que también involucra el aspecto afectivo de la gente que viene al museo. Eso puede ser una característica brasileña a ser también evaluada. Entonces, gracias por conectar y poner todo eso junto para que nos conocemos mejor. Gracias. Gracias, Milene. Uh, any other question? No? Everybody's getting hungry. Emma? One more message, One more message please. Again from ICOM. Again from ICOM. <laughs> Interesting. Um, Emma, je viens en effet de voir la scène. Parce que moi, uh, um, I answer all people, of course, I was writing them. Uh, well, there is a compliment for me, I won't read it. Um, la conférence devrait être sur Twitter. Bravo et bon courage pour la suite. Donc, uh, why not? So we'll put the conference on Twitter next time. So we're learning, we're learning. <laughs> we're not museum educators for nothing. We still go on learning. <laughs> Any other question? No? If there are no, uh, no other questions, uh, I would last ask you to come back then by 2 o'clock. No? Okay, thank you to everybody. And enjoy your meal. <laughs> <laughs>